Oh, come on, man. It doesn't want to ch change my slides. Hold on. <laughs> there we go. Okay, I put a questionnaire in the chat box. It came from the Alabama Council on Developmental Disabilities. And during the life of this grant, which has been three years so far, they, re they rely on feedback from us to, to make sure the project is successful and to see what changes we might need to make or they might need to make. I put those questions in the chat box. They're in Spanish, English, and Korean. So please take time to fill that out. Um, because it's important to this project. And um, we have been very lucky. People don't usually get a third year on a grant from ACDD. So we feel like we were very lucky to have that. And um, just to let you know, we have another, a couple of other projects coming up before we start, and I'll address it at the end as well. Uh, we were very lucky because we submitted a proposal to Tiger Giving Day, and we, we were able to get $10,000 for future interpretation services um, when this grant ends on 30 September. So we're excited about that. Um, we keep trying, we're gonna keep this thing going. <laughs> and then um, the other thing we have going on, if you have come to our trainings for at least five, you're gonna have the opportunity to take part in some research, which has to do with interviews on how the project worked for you, uh, what's still missing in Alabama as far as um, your access to services and interpretation and translation and all that. Um, so yeah, we're it doesn't it's not going to take too long to do that. But what we wanted to do is if you attended five trainings, we will include you in the research and you'll get an email from us. And you'll have the opportunity to be part of um, a drawing for $50 gift cards. And there'll be more than one. So I just wanted to share that. Let's see. Um, yeah. So I, I, I mentioned the questionnaire being in English and Spanish. So we are OK. And lastly, um, I already introduced myself. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Maria, and then she's going to turn it over to Ms. Stang, who is the Caregiver Outreach Specialist at Alabama Lifespan Resource Network, and she, we are so delighted to have her speaking today. So go ahead, Maria. Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to school, okay? I know that many of your children are back in school, so GP, I hope that Everybody had a wonderful summertime. Uh, my name is Maria Gutierrez, and I truly appreciate the time that you guys are taking to be here with us, uh, parents and professionals. So I am the family navigator for the Regional Autism Network. We are region number four, and we cover 20 counties. And I am a parent myself. So thank you for being here. And I am so happy to finally have met in, uh, through this uh, platform, Ms. Uh, Jenny Stang from the Alabama Lifespan Respite. This is an organization that we have uh, work uh, continuously with them. And I'm just happy that she will be able to present this information. I thank you for the uh, parents and professionals that sent the questions uh, previously. I will be putting them on the chat box for Ms. Jenny to, to view, and they will be addressed at the end. So, Ms. Jenny, the floor is all yours, and thank you again for being here. Thank you so much, and good morning. Um, as they said, my name is Jenny Stang. I am the Caregiver Outreach Specialist for Alabama Lifespan Respite, um, and what that means is my job is to look after the caregivers on our program and to um, support them through education, um, through care chat, um, just on their journey as a caregiver, because I'm sure all of you know it is a very rewarding journey, but it also has a lot of road bumps and it can be difficult. And so my job is to uh, make your job a little easier. <laughs> so I'll go ahead and start sharing my screen now and go ahead and get to the presentation. There we go. All right. Let me squish this down. All right. So I'll begin by introducing Alabama Lifespan Respite, and um, then I'll go on to um, explain what the reimbursement program is and how it can be beneficial to you as a caregiver. Um, so Alabama Lifespan Respite was established in 2000 as a statewide program of UCP Huntsville, which is United Cerebral Palsy Huntsville. 
Um, it is an ACL Federal Lifespan Respite Grant recipient and a member of the ARCH National Respite Network. We serve as a staffing entity to the governor appointed Alabama Lifespan Respite Coalition, whose purpose is to build partnerships and coordinate respite care efforts statewide. We also provide public awareness about respite to the citizens of Alabama, and we identify, coordinate, and develop community and funding resources for respite services. Um, in a nutshell, that just means that we are going everywhere and anywhere we possibly can to strengthen this program so that we can serve more people. Um, uh, we're coalition members, um, or part of our, co our coalition members, sorry, represent the Alabama Senate and House of Representatives, the Alabama Departments of Rehabilitation Services, Senior Services, Medicaid, Public Health, Child Abuse and Neglect Prevention, Human Resources and Mental Health, as well as the Governor's Office on Disability. Um, Alabama Council for De Developmental Disabilities, Community Respite Providers, Direct Service Provider Agencies, Disability Specific Organization, and University Partners. So it's a whole lot of us working uh, towards the same goal, which I think is exciting. Um, Alabama Lifespan Respite, Respite, we serve full-time unpaid family caregivers of individuals with a chronic illness or disability who require full-time care. Um, our caregiver services and supports include planned and emergency respite reimbursement, free online and on-site caregiver education like we're doing today, free online respite provider training, which I'll discuss here in a little while, respite awareness, resources, and referrals, technical assistance for startup or expansion of community-based respite services, and state and local federal advocacy. We also partner with the Alabama Department of Senior Services, all 13 Alabama area on agencies, agencies on aging, and the Alabama Department of Mental Health. Oh, let me close this up real quick. There we go. Um, we also partner with um, the Alabama Department of Child Abuse and Neglect Prevention. And we, um, sorry, my slides are in the way. There we go, move that out of the way. So now I can see what my notes. <laughs> um, so these partnerships allow us to reach and connect with a diverse population of caregivers statewide and offer them all the services listed here, including free caregiver education. So why, why do we exist? Um, it's to decrease caregiver stress, anxiety, fatigue, and increase overall caregiver wellness. And that includes physical, mental, and emotional. So whole health wellness. And this reduces the possibility of abuse and neglect as a result of caregiver burnout, as well as help prevent premature out of home placement for the care recipient. So our goal is to keep your loved one with you as long as possible. And one of the best ways we found to do that is to keep you as healthy as possible. And so that's why we do the physical, mental, and emotional approach. Um, so our program is called the ALR Universal Respite. And we offer quarterly planned personal choice option respite reimbursement. So I'll explain what that is here in a minute. We also have emergency respite funds that are available to caregivers who are currently in, uh, enrolled with ALR. You can visit our website at alabamarespite.org, select apply for respite, review the program information and click on the application link. Um, applications, which are also available in Spanish, can be emailed or mailed to caregivers by request. And um, applicants not current, current can, cannot currently be enrolled with or receiving respite specific assistance through any other program, including Alabama Cares, Medicaid Waiver, VA, Alzheimer's Association, et cetera. This includes individuals who are currently enrolled with another program and have exhausted their funds for the current fiscal year. So for an example, if you're currently receiving respite specific waiver from Medicaid um, and you run out of that, of that fund, um, you would still not or would not um, uh, qualify for our program. So our program is designed to kind of meet people in the gaps who maybe don't qualify or are not currently on any of those other programs. So where does respite provision take place? It's going to be either out of the home in a community-based uh, facility or a center, or can be in the home. 
Having the availability to choose where, when, and who you receive respite from is known as the personal choice option respite. Out of home settings where respite may occur include community or faith based programs, center based programs, child or adult daycare centers, after school programs, residential facilities, parks and recreation programs like special needs camps or event based activities like therapeutic horseback riding. These opportunities, which usually involve scheduled activities, can serve as respite for family caregivers and as a break for the care recipient who they may benefit from a few hours or a few days in the company of others while engaging in fun activities. Um, we don't like to admit it, but sometimes our loved ones get tired of seeing us too, right? So they need a break from us sometimes. <laughs> um, and if you are enrolled with ALR for respite reimbursement, you may utilize any of these out-of-home respite settings when taking respite. And that's the beauty of our program. Respite is who or whatever respite looks like to you. So you can choose how you receive that respite. If you're looking for out-of-home respite in your area, Alabama Respite has a database on our website that lists by county the community respite providers that we're aware of. This is ever-changing, so check back often for current information. And if you know of others that aren't on our list, please pass those along so we can add them. So who provides in-home respite? So when considering in-home respite, let's look at that. Um, there's two main types of in-home respite providers, either skilled or formal respite providers, and unskilled or informal respite providers. Um, if you're enrolled in our program, you can utilize either type when taking respite. Um, not all care recipients, recipients require skilled care, and it may not be ready available in your area. So for these reasons and others, caregivers may look for unskilled respite. Unskilled or informal respite providers are people you already know, you already trust them, and they may already be familiar with your care recipient and their specific care needs. You might pay them or they might offer to help without compensation. If you are paying them, the amount is usually negotiable and far less expensive than skilled care. So roughly 75% of the caregivers on our program, um, they utilize unskilled care at an average of about $11 an hour compared to an average of $27 an hour for skilled care. So you can see how um, you can make your funds stretch a little longer if you choose unskilled care. Sometimes um, it's a better choice for your loved one because they might know the person coming in already and so they don't have to adjust. Um, maybe they already have a relationship set up with that person. And so some caregivers and care recipients find this option to be preferred. So while your family and friends and neighbors are trusted and well-meaning, it is important that they receive basic respite provider training and know your expectations for care in your absence. So how can you make sure that the informal providers have appropriate training for the safety of your loved one and for your peace of mind? One way is through formal basic training. So Alabama Lifespan Respite offers free basic respite provider training through online or online through Care Academy for unskilled in-home respite providers to be better prepared to deliver planned and emergency respite services to the families that they serve. Care Academy provides eight hours of online training all in a video platform and it is available with closed captioning in English and Spanish. Coursework includes emergency procedures, safety precautions, activities of daily li living, and more. So it includes the role of a respite provider, elder abuse prevention, emergency procedures, infection control, safety precautions, activities of daily living, fall prevention, cultural competency, working with an aging population, nutrition and meal preparation, and an overview of mental illness care. So really a large spectrum of needs that come across uh, your caregiving uh, journey. Um, classes begin on the first day and they end on the last day of each month. Participants must be an Alabama resident. They have to apply online and they're required to take a pre and post training survey to help us determine how effective our program is. Um, as an incentive, participants are eligible to receive a $25 education stipend if they complete all eight hours of training. 
Caregivers can apply for a $50 stipend to assist with the cost of conducting a criminal background check on a respite provider. So, which is pretty great when you think about it. Um, maybe you want to do unskilled care, but you don't really know anybody. Um, this is a good way for you to feel more confident in your choice of who you choose to come and help you with your loved one. So how do you connect an informal respite provider with Care Academy and where can you find the stipend application? Go to alabamarespite.org and click on free respite provider training and then scroll down to apply here. Alabama Lifespan Reimbursement Enrollment Applications also include a place for caregivers to indicate if they would like more information about mental health supports and counseling. If they answer yes, we follow up with each caregiver accordingly. Additionally, if a caregiver who isn't enrolled in a reimbursement program applies for the Caregiver Wellness Initiative, we follow up with each caregiver to see if they need respite and qualify for our program. So what is the Caregiver Wellness Initiative? Um, to further support the total well-being of unpaid full-time family caregivers statewide, Alabama Lifespan Respite established the Caregiver Wellness Initiative to provide funds specifically for free mental health counseling to caregivers currently enrolled with any of our respite reimbursement programs. Um, why did we do this? Well, it's really just to help stabilize the mental health of the caregiver. Um, especially during the pandemic, where a lot of our respite opportunities, um, our schools, a lot of our daycares were closed. And so we noticed that our caregivers were feeling the heat of that, of that isolation. Um, and so we, were, we saw an uptick in um, them calling us and wanting help and you know, getting the emergency respite because they needed a break. Um, and so we created this to kind of decrease stress, anxiety, fatigue, and burnout, um, and just increase an overall caregiver wellness. Um, and possibly helping to prevent premature out-of-home placement of the care recipient. So the CWI information has been shared um, via direct email, regular snail mail, website, social media, print, and television news, and respite education and awareness opportunities throughout agency partners to caregivers currently enrolled with any ALR reimbursement programs and new applicants. And we fund it through the Administration on Community Living, Administration on Aging, Federal Lifespan Respite, the Daniel Foundation of Alabama, and the Venturi Brighter Day Employee Fund. So we have federal, state, and local grants to fund this initiative. So if you are interested in attending others like this, you know, other education opportunities like this, or if you want to take a look back and see if any of the um, education that I've created for the program, you can also find that online. So you go to alabamarespite.org, click on attend events, and it'll show you what's upcoming, the classes that we're hosting, as well as any that are hosted by our agency partners statewide. We also post all of our events on Facebook, and you can sign up for our monthly newsletter that has all of our caregiver education information delivered to you through email. So caregiver education topics vary, um, but we want to provide indirect mental health supports to underserved caregivers, um, especially during the pandemic. You know, some of us have kind of bounce back. Some of us maybe are, you know, don't have as many um, respite opportunities because some of our programs, you know, our, our local programs and our faith-based programs, they, they stopped during the pandemic and they didn't start back up again. Um, and so we definitely want to provide as much education and mental health support as we can free through our website. Um, so topics include caregiver depression and anxiety, emotional wellness, how stress affects your mental and physical health. We've done classes on anticipatory grief. Um, and we also offer respite stipends to enable caregivers to participate in education opportunities while a respite provider cares for the care recipient. So we approximately have 1,200 caregivers that have participated in our caregiver mental health education opportunities statewide since 2020. And that number is increasing. Um, Caregiver mental health education is presented by both Alabama respite educators like myself and mental health professionals. So we do have guest educators quite often. 
Um, through this partnership, Alabama Lifespan Respite began building a statewide network of licensed mental health providers who are familiar with caregiver and disability related mental health issues. This network was utilized in our most direct mental health support for underserved caregivers, the Caregiver Wellness Initiative. So I'll go ahead and give you a little bit more details on this before I move on. Um, these are stipends. So these are um, funds awarded to caregivers. And we start with three. So you can get three um, free sessions by a licensed mental health provider. We do have a database, but you can choose your own provider. So if you already have somebody that you're seeing, um, as long as they accept direct invoicing from us, they can be your provider. So we don't go through your insurance. We don't have any um, personal information you know, given to us by the, by the mental health providers. All we do is we wait for the invoice and we pay the check, okay? If you are participating in this program and after your three sessions, your provider and yourself think that you would benefit from more, then we will extend it to up to three more sessions. And we found great results with this program. Um, the feedback has been amazing. A lot of our caregivers um, found it like a godsend for them and their loved ones so that they can um, alleviate their stress, build resilience, all that good stuff that we're looking to do for you all. Um, we do respite awareness. So caregiver respite awareness includes presentations and exhibits at conferences and community events, as well as lunch and learns with groups and organizations, churches and agencies that serve family caregivers. So we really want to get as many of our local and statewide organizations involved as we can, because the more um, the more opportunities we have to share with our caregivers, the better it is for everybody involved. We also do um, advocacy. So ALL, ALR serves as the staffing entity to the governor appointed Alabama Lifespan Respite Coalition. And their purpose is to build partnerships, coordinate respite care efforts statewide, provide public awareness about respite to the citizens of Alabama and identify, coordinate and develop community and funding resources for respite. Um, I, I was really surprised how much this agency did because I live in Huntsville, which is where we're based, and I had no idea they existed. And so it's really important that we have these advocacy opportunities so we can go out into the community and let people know who we are, why we're here, and how we can help. Um, I think that might be the end of my slides here. We also do public policy outreach. So we do talk with government officials to increase our funding. Um, Really, all this is to say that you know you're working hard, and so are we. We're working hard for you. We want to make sure that these resources are available to everyone that needs them, and uh, we're just expanding, 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 so that you guys are better served in your caregiving journey. So here's our contact information. I want to thank you so much for listening to my presentation and being an awesome caregiver. You can reach out if you have any other questions or add them to the chat, and you can share our resources with any other caregivers who might benefit from our services. So we are operating uh, Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. You can call us at 256-859-8300, and you can um, find all sorts of information about our programs and apply to any of them through alabamarespite.org. So are there any questions? Thank you, Ms. Jenny. Uh, yes, they are, and they're still coming up. Um, I already forward them to you, so you should be able to see them on privately on your chat box. And um, very important questions and very uh, different questions. So yes. can you see them? I can, okay. So if you read the question, and then answer that way is recorded and somebody might be thinking about the same question so that we don't have to uh, okay. type it. In. Thank you. So the first question is, I filled out an application and sent it via email with proof of diagnosis. However, I was informed there were no more funds at this time. Will I have to submit another application for the next budget year? No, you won't. So our fiscal year ends um, our new one or ends at the end of this month, I believe, and begins in September. 
and we already are working through our waiting list. So if you already applied, you are automatically on our waiting list. And so those will be approved in the order that they are received. Um, the next question is, I was awarded mental health services for counseling. However, there were no providers near the area where I live who are bilingual. Is there another way to have access to a provider who is bilingual? Um, we um, ran into this issue, not just for our bilingual caregivers, but also those who live in very rural communities who maybe don't have access to in-person providers. Um, and so the way that we have attacked this problem is we, um, if you're in that situation where you have to do maybe a telehealth or a video service with a provider, um, and you don't have means to access through the internet, we do um, have tablets that we actually give our caregivers specifically to access telehealth. So if you find a provider who is bilingual, um, as long as they're in the state of Alabama, and as long as they are licensed to practice here, you can choose them if they do a telehealth and that's convenient for you, um, that is also an option. So unfortunately, we don't have as many bilingual caregivers or uh, mental health providers as we'd like. Um, and that's, that's the best solution we've come up with so far so that you can access any provider across the state if they do offer a telehealth option or something similar to telehealth. Um, next, if my child qualified for skilled respite under a Medicaid waiver, can we still qualify for your program? Um, unfortunately, no. Our program is specifically going to service those who are not receiving respite funds from any other program, including Medicaid, including VA. Um, that's just how it is. I'm not sure um, exactly why other than, you know, funds are just going to be dispersed how they can be, and we don't really have control over all that. <laughs> um, do I need to provide any legal documentation, uh, documents to show my immigration status? No, absolutely not. We don't have anything on our um, application that requires any personal information like Social Security or anything like that. Um, we're here to service you as a caregiver, and that's our only concern. Um, the only thing on our application that might indicate that we look into that kind of stuff, I guess, would be that there is a, um, a space to put your income. You know, it's like, are you, is it above 1500 a month or something like that, I think. And the only reason we put that in there is so that we are better understanding the demographic that we're serving, but it doesn't play a role into whether you qualify or not. So no, you don't have to worry about any immigration status or any documentation in, in regards to that. As long as you have um, a diagnosis, that's really all we need. Um, next question. I have a question regarding the reimbursement. Do I have to declare this income on my taxes? I know that if you receive, um, I don't know the amount, but um, this question has come up before and we will not provide the amount required for you to document it on your taxes. Um, so most of our um, caregivers are getting, you know, under that threshold, and so it never has come up. So, um, yeah, that's never that's never been an issue. Um, let's see. Do you provide caregiver training in Spanish? We actually will be here soon as far as um, giving the overview of our program. We have um, an, a Spanish interpreter on staff and we're working with her right now to um, bring more of this education to our Spanish speaking community. Um, that's definitely something I can make a note of and see if there's um, a great need for that. I don't personally speak Spanish, but I'm sure we can find some way to get it translated to you so that you can participate in those classes. Um, next, I have benefited so much from the caregiver mental health and I thank you for this opportunity. Awesome. That's great to hear. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, can you let us know what kind of disability qualifies to receive respite? Yes. So our program, we call it Lifespan Respite. So we have people on our program who are caregiving for children. We have people who are caregiving for the elderly and everyone in between. Um, the only thing that um, we require is that the doctors um, or the proof of diagnosis states that whoever you're caring for requires help with daily living activities. 
So that could be a stroke, that could be Alzheimer's or dementia, that could be um, severe autism, that could be cerebral palsy. Um, I do believe the UCP, which is the umbrella organization we're under, we, um, we service people with um, 188 different diagnoses. So um, as long as whoever you're caring for cannot care for themselves, that's you, you will qualify for a program. Um, next question, how much are the stipends vouchers for respite and how many to receive during the year? Um, we don't have a specific amount because it varies depending on our funding. So we have a pool of money at the beginning of the year and we divide it equally among our caregivers. And we do uh, distribute those quarterly. So you'll get one every three to four months. And it's usually a couple hundred dollars. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less, um, depending on you know, how much we get in the beginning of the year. So there is no direct answer to that question. <laughs> it's um, just as the funds are available, we give them to our caregivers. Um, next question, how much do you recommend is paid to a respite provider? The only requirement we have is it has to be at least minimum wage. I think the average is between 10 and $12 for unskilled care. And I believe it's 25 to 27 for skilled care. Um, we do not, um, we don't have any hard rules on that. However, if you are doing skilled care and they charge you more than $25, I think, or $27, um, that might have to be approved by the CARES coordinator. Um, but yeah, as long as it's minimum wage to stay legal, that's all we really require. So that's up to you and whoever you're choosing to provide care for your loved one. Okay, let's see. How can families be referred to your program? Um, that's a good question. We don't do referrals. We accept referrals. <laughs> we don't require referrals to be on our program. So if you know somebody who's interested or maybe could you know, benefit from our program, you can just tell them about our website and they can apply there. Um, most of our caregivers have come to us just through either another agency giving them our number or they do a quick Google search. Um, so if, if we don't have a specific route to referral, it's as long as you have our contact information, you can contact us and jump on the program. Do you have the application in other languages like Korean or Spanish? Um, right now, currently, we just have it in English and Spanish, but I can definitely make a note to see if we can get any other um, translations available. All right, and does your agency have a list of providers for respite? Um, yes and no. So we don't do referrals um, just for liability reasons, um, but we do have a database of, um, by, and it's listed by county, of respite programs that we know of. Um, and we're constantly adding to that. I mentioned that um, earlier in the presentation. Most of those are going to be faith-based or um, like daycare, adult daycare programs. Um, but as far as um, agencies, that send somebody to your house. Um, we don't have a database or anything like that of them. Um, it's really just about giving as much power and control to you all as possible um, without you know, telling you, well, here, go to this person because we can't really vouch for the care um, as an entity, if that makes sense. There's a lot of really good communities uh, out there that can be helpful, but um, it's really up to you to find the, the respite provider. Um, how old can it can be can it be a recipient in order to qualify for your program? Any age, any age. It's lifespan. So you know if you have an infant who um, has a disability that's going to require full time care up and through you know their the whole life, you know you can apply for the program. All right. Next question. I am a caregiver of two people in my household. Can I fill out two applications? No, um, we, only, we can only do one caregiver per household. So even if you are caring for two people, you would only have the one, um, the one application and the one stipend. It wouldn't, we wouldn't double it because you had two caregivers or two care recipients. 
Next, does your agency still have the emergency program? If so, can you explain it? Yes. So the emergency respite program was designed for people who um, they had an emergency, right? So maybe the caregiver got sick or maybe they had to attend a funeral, something that wasn't planned came up. Um, and then they would let us know that they need an emergency respite and then we would give them X amount of dollars as determined by someone in a different pay grade than me. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so we, we do still have the emergency respite, but what we found is um, we, not as many people are um, needing that as much because we did introduce the caregiver wellness initiative. So the pandemic kind of drained a lot of our funds in the beginning because people were having mental emergencies, mental health emergencies. Um, so by having both the emergency respite funds and the caregiver wellness funds, it kind of, we were able to address a lot of different things for people um, that needed that emergency respite. But for now, we've seen kind of like, you know, a decrease in that um, people needing the respite for emergency health, mental health issues. And now it's more for, you know, I'm a caregiver and I'm about to have surgery and I need to be able to pay somebody to come and help me. And so, yes, that is available. But um, like I mentioned before, we are at the end of our fiscal year. So everything is kind of on a hold until September. But if you're interested in that, you should be able to apply for that um, if you're on our program starting in September. Okay, let's see. When hiring someone to be your respite provider, what should we take under consideration regarding the person? Um, that's a good question. And a lot of um, a lot of people already know who they're gonna have because it's someone that they already know and trust. Um, but I would say um, just make sure that they are aware of your loved one's needs and aware of your expectations. And so it's good for you to kind of think about, you know, take note of what are your daily routines? What is it, what is it that you're doing every day for your loved one? Make notes of that. Um, I would even suggest creating a medical binder that has information. Um, and of course, you don't want to get too sensitive information in there because, you know, you don't want to... Um, you know, blur the lines of confidentiality or anything, but, you know, just kind of start thinking now, like, okay, well, I, you know, I have to prepare these medications, I have to prepare these meals, I have to, you know, these are the bathing schedule, if that's what they're doing for you. Um, so I would just say, you know, whatever you, um, whatever you want them to do to make you feel more comfortable about them being there with your loved one, um, that's what you should look for, okay? And you can even do, um, sometimes people will do interviews first, you know, you don't have to just accept whoever you can, you can interview them and see maybe they have the skill set, but maybe the personalities conflict, you know, so just make sure it's somebody that you trust. And um, it's okay to say no to somebody if you just don't like their vibe, you know. <laughs> um, next, what information is needed from the person who will be your respite provider? That's 100% up to you. 100% up to you. So, you know, as long as they are over the age of 18 and they do not live with you and your care recipient, they qualify under our program. So um, that's why the Care Academy is such a good resource because they can take that for free, that eight hours of training for free, and they can take it on their time. So, you know, most people download the mobile app and go through it that way. Um, and that will give you, um, at least they will have a base understanding of caregiving and mental health and medication and fall risks and things like that. So it just kind of helps you with peace of mind and having somebody come in with your loved one. Um, is, can respite help with obtaining hearing aids? No, our program is specifically designed to give you a break. We don't um, assist with any other um, financial needs or medical care or anything like that. It's just about having somebody come in and help you with your loved one while you take a break. Can the funds be used to pay for camp? Um, yes, I know that we do have, um, I think in the presentation we talked about, you know, like the specific therapies, you know, like horseback riding therapy, or sometimes they do have, um, you know, camp, like week-long camps or something like that for people with disabilities, and you can use your respite funds for that. However, depending on the cost, it might not cover the entire camp experience, um, but it could at least help buffer some of that um, initial expense. 
Um, is res can respite help with visual therapists? Again, no, we don't have, um, we don't pay for medical interventions. We don't pay for therapies. Um, it's designed to give you a break to help reduce the caregiver stress, reduce caregiver burnout. So if you need a visual therapist, that's going to be something that you'll have to find other ways to pay for through insurance or direct payments. Um, we don't use respite funds for that. Um, again, can respite funds be used to pay for hearing aids um, or with visual therapists? No. Nope, it's just for in-home care. Now, if you hire somebody who is a professional or skilled care, you know, from an agency, they may be able to provide different things like um, bathing is a big one, um, things like that, but um, no other therapies are covered under respite care. That's the end of the questions that I see. Are there more coming? Oh, here we go. Are there other agencies in Alabama that provide respite? Um, are you saying like respite reimbursement or just the actual respite? Respite reimbursement, okay. Um, we do have other agencies like Medicaid, VA, um, but if you are on those programs, you would not qualify for Alabama respite. I did not see any other questions, Ms. Jenny, but those were very uh, smart questions and great questions. So thank you for all our questions and thank you to our attendees for submitting them. Uh, if we would like maybe just to wait one more minute to see if yeah. somebody else has any other questions. Is there anything else that you would like to add? Um, if it's okay, I can add my email address into the chat. So if anybody comes up with other questions or um, they just need any other information or they just want to say hi, <laughs> they can contact me. Um, and I know I'm not a, you know, I, I only speak English, but I do like to always offer to any caregivers in our program. Um, if you just need to talk, if you just need to vent, I'm here for you. Um, my job before this was I was a crisis counselor. And so I uh, heard all the things <laughs> um, and I, I am trauma informed. So if you just need to schedule a care chat with me, you know, I, you can call me up and we can talk for, you know, 30 minutes or so. And um, sometimes just having that validation and being able to kind of purge out of your brain space can be very helpful. So I will put my email address and if anybody feels the need to reach out in that capacity or any other capacity, feel free. Thank you. And I just want to let know uh, our attendees that the PowerPoint will be sent via email and has been translated into English and Spanish uh, for, I mean, it's been translated into Spanish uh, and will be sent via email to everybody that uh, registered for today's uh, program. So I do not see any other questions, but I do want to thank you for uh for taking the time to come and present for our families and professionals. And I know that they had a lot of questions, you know, and I love it when the PowerPoints are so easy to understand and the flow <laughs> just goes like so nicely. So thank you for doing that. Um, Dr. Hill, is there anything that you would like to add? Well, I just wanted uh, to also say thank you for coming today. And uh, it's a nice way to kind of think about transitioning from summer. <laughs> And um, I know respite's so important. Um, so Maria and I were at a conference where the biggest thing they found uh, the need is for respite care and understanding what respite is. Um, I did want to thank Mr. Reed and Ms. Mateo, our interpreters. They always do such a wonderful job and they're so easy to work with. And uh, just a reminder that we did get some money from Tiger Giving, so we'll be able to continue this after the grant runs out. And then if you've been with us for five or more trainings, then we, we, we appreciate your loyalty, is that the word, your participation, and we are going to conduct some interviews doing research and you will, um, there will be seven, several $50 um, gift cards available. So that's everything I have. Maria, 
Um, did you want to tell them what's coming up next or should they stand by? Uh, they should stand by, okay? There are more programs. We are going to be trying to do some in-person or hybrid sessions. So I know that a lot of families from our from our counties, you know, Coffee County, they want us to be there in person. So be on the lookout for those emails. And uh, like I said, uh, welcome back to the new school year if you have children in the school setting. And we hope that this new school year goes smoothly and the transition is easy. <laughs> and, and so uh, thank you for being with us and being so loyal and participating. Let us know and give us some feedback. Really, please take time to fill out the surveys because those help us a lot. And it will help ACDD, you know, uh, on planning on developing new opportunities for programs. So thank you so very much, Ms. Jenny. If you would like to close down, that will be great. And we'll be seeing you uh, next month and be on the lookout for our emails. Thank you, everybody. Ms. Jenny? Yeah, I just wanted to say thank you again for jumping in and getting this information. I hope it's useful for you. And um, if you are interested in looking at any of the recordings of the education I've done so far, um, most of them have been about building resilience to stress. So, you know, we talk about gratitude practices, mindfulness, um, avoiding resentment and anger. Um, that's kind of the flow that we've been doing right now, because, you know, you, sometimes you can't change your situation. You can only change your reaction to it. And so that's what I've been trying to work with my caregivers on. Um, we also do a monthly support group that's just socializing. Um, you can register for that online at alabamarespite.org and all of our education is free to join. So I hope to see some of you there. Thank you. And I do want to encourage our participants to please go and go in and sign up for their newsletters. Okay, go on Facebook, you know, like their page because there's a lot of great information that they always put up on, the, on those sites. And that way you could be informed about what is coming up. And I know that sometimes, you know, caregivers, we think ourselves that we are super women and supermen, but uh, we need to take advantage of those of respite opportunities and be taking care of ourselves so that we could do a better job taking care of our loved ones. So thank you again. I hope that everybody has a wonderful day and a wonderful week, and we'll be seeing you guys around. Thank you. Bye-bye.